Hi, this is Dave the RPA Guy, and in this Blue Prism tutorial, which is part six of our function series, we'll be looking at two function groups, the data functions and the file functions. This is gonna be a pretty quick tutorial. This is a grand total of three functions as of the current Blue Prism version. You can look over there next to me, you'll see that's what we're gonna be going over, so let's step into it. <laughs> As I said, we're gonna be looking at two function groups today here. You can see over in this list of functions that we're gonna be looking at the data functions group, which just contains the bytes function, as well as the file function group, which contains load binary file and load text file. So let's go ahead and zoom in on our window and start talking about those. Before we get started, let's take a look at what we see on the screen. I have part of the desktop revealed up here. That's because we're gonna be using these files. There's one called binary file.pdf and text file.txt. Let me go ahead and point out the basic difference between these. Obviously one's a text file and one's a PDF file. But what that means is this PDF is actually in binary underneath. So we can store that into a binary data item in Blue Prism. The text file on the other hand cannot be stored as binary in Blue Prism. You'd have to do some conversion. Instead, this is plain text. We have to store that into a text data item. So we're gonna be doing that for both of these. For each of them, we will get the number of bytes, B-Y-T-E-S, that are in the file and to accomplish that, for the binary file, we're actually gonna use the inbuilt function. And then to accomplish it with the text file, we'll have to use an action from the utility file management VBO. And then for both of them, we'll write those files using the data back onto the desktop with a slightly new name. For the binary file, it'll be new binary file.pdf. And for the text file, it'll be new text file.txt. Now that we've looked at that, let's go ahead and get started in and I'll explain a bit more as we go along. Our first function to use is the load binary file function. This is going to be in the file group. What it's going to do is you see here that it's going to take an input of a file location. And so I have it concatenating the folder, which is C users, Dave M desktop, and then the file name itself, which is binary file.pdf. It'll concatenate those two things, give it the input. And then what this calculation stage will do is use this function to grab this file right here and put it into a binary data item. Let's go ahead and step through and do that. Okay, so we can see that we have 433,994 bytes into this data item. Now, I want to programmatically get how many bytes are in that file. I know we can see this right here, but the bot is not going to be able to get that data without calling on it somehow. It's just displayed here for our use. Let's step, and what we've done now is we've gotten the same number out of here, but now the bot can actually use this number if it needs to do some checking to verify the size of the file is correct, for example. So what this did was it took the bytes function that is in the data functions group and it has an input of some binary data, which we gave it right here from this file. And it told us that there are 433,994 bytes in that file. The next thing we wanna do is write this binary data that we have in this data item back onto the desktop and let's verify that we can actually intake a PDF as binary and then write it back to the desktop without corrupting the data. First, before we do that, let me open up the binary file so you can see what's inside of it. Create PDF files quickly and easily. This is just a random file that I downloaded off the internet just for an example. And we're going to step over this. Let me point out what this is actually. This is referencing the utility file management VBO with the action write binary data. And this is taking the input of a file name, which is actually the full file path and file name of the file that you want. So it doesn't exist yet, but I told it, I want you to put the file on the desktop here with the file name that I gave it in that data item we saw. And it's also taking the input of the binary file data itself, which is of course this data right here. I'm going to step over and you'll see that it created new binary file. Let's go into that PDF and just verify that it didn't corrupt our data and looks good. So we have successfully taken this PDF and put it into a binary data item and then written it back to the desktop. So a quick use case for working with binary files here. Consider that you may have one of two purposes in getting this binary file.pdf. One, you could be trying to get the data that's inside of it so you can work with it in your process. Or two, you might need that entire file 
for example, for an audit log. So if it's the first one, then you probably don't want to bring it in as a binary data item. You want to use some method to actually read the PDF itself and get, get the data out of it. The other is if you need it for like an audit log, you want to take the entire file itself and bring it in as a binary data item. Maybe if you need to hold on to it for a period of time so you can write it out later. Our third function is load text file. This is the second of our two functions that's in the file function group. And you'll see here it's load text file and it takes an input very similar to load binary file where it just is asking you for the location of the text file to bring in. So I've pointed it to this text file over here, textfile.txt, and where it's gonna store it is into text file data right here. So let's go ahead and step and we've gotten 3,357 characters out of this file. Let's go ahead and take a look at the file so we can verify ahead of time what the format is here. Looks like you've got lorem ipsum and a bunch of other stuff that is nonsensical, but we are going to verify after we have written the text file back onto the desktop that we haven't corrupted our data. So the very next action we have here is similar to the second calculation we did up here where we calculated the number of bytes in the binary file. This is a little bit different where we are using the utility file management get file size. This is also going to output a number of bytes based upon the file size. And in, in this case though, we're not talking about a binary file necessarily. So here also you'll notice that it's taking a file path. It's not actually going to be reading the data item we have in here. It's actually still pointing to the original file location and that's still going to tell us the same information though. Let's go ahead and step over this and we've gotten 3,357 bytes. You'll see that correlates to the number of characters here in the file itself. And we could use that again to verify the size of the file. Maybe you're not allowed to have file sizes over 5 megabytes or 10 megabytes and you just use the action that's inside of that utility file management management VBO to determine that. And the last thing we're going to do, just like we did with the binary file, is that we're going to write it back to the desktop, giving it a new name, new text file. And so let's go ahead and do that. So we got new text file.txt. Let's go ahead and open it up. Just make sure we had that non, yep, we still got our nonsensical lorem ipsum stuff here. And so we have not corrupted our file. Go ahead and close that. We are zoomed out now. And I just want to give you a quick word of caution before we finish up this video. If you have a certain file type that you want to work with or certain files that you're going to be planning to convert into binary data in Blue Prism, just verify that your output is correct and do that test multiple times with multiple different files to ensure that the format doesn't get corrupted because losing your file integrity could really have some repercussions down the road. And I'd say to just trust, but always verify. In this Blue Prism tutorial, we went over the function groups data and file. And with that, we learned that there are times when you need to bring a file into Blue Prism, you could store it as binary data. And then other times when you want to bring text in, you store it as a text data item. And in our next video, we will be getting to the logic functions. So be sure to join me for that one.